Oklahoma's own News on 6 starts now. Only on 6, an innocent woman shot while driving down a Tulsa highway is speaking out this afternoon in an exclusive interview about that terrifying experience. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brian Dorman. And I'm Shannon Russo. She was driving on I-244 yesterday near the Harvard exit when she was shot in the stomach. News on 6 is Amelia McGavro spoke exclusively with that woman and joins us now live with more. Amelia? I mean, who does? <laughs> I spoke to police today and they're still investigating, but do not have any suspects at this time. Brian. Amelia, you mentioned Amanda's recovering. It was great to see her there in the piece already out of the hospital. Uh, do you know today how she's feeling? Brian, she says, she, yeah, Brian, she says she's in a lot of pain, but is just grateful. The bullet did not hit any vital organs. She actually has a husband and six kids. So today she's very, very grateful she was able to come home to them. Brian. And we're grateful that she was as well. Amelia, thank you so much. Well, power is now back on near 61st in Peoria after Tulsa police say a woman fell asleep while driving home from work. She crashed into two power poles, actually cutting power to about 1500 people at one point. Uh, the woman did go to the hospital after showing signs of a concussion. Traffic on Peoria is temporarily down to one lane in each direction as crews put in replacement poles. Some families say their lives are still turned upside down nearly three months after they were forced out of their apartment. In July, those living at Vista Shadow Mountain were forced to leave when the fire marshal declared the complex unlivable. Last night, I showed you the deplorable conditions in several units, some of them down to their studs with exposed wiring, black mold and daylight coming in through the walls. You'll want to see part two of my Oklahoma Zone original investigation as I confront the owners of Vista Shadow Mountain. Part two of that special report airs tonight at 9 and 10. For the rest of our afternoon and evening, we're going to be dealing with spotty showers and patches of drizzle. The Coweta High School football team is getting ready to play its first home football game after a tornado caused some damage around the field. The storm caused even more damage, as you know, to Mission Intermediate School and its baseball field. On Monday, several student athletes helped clean it all up. What it looked like at, at sunrise uh, Monday morning and what it looked like at 10 o'clock were night and day. I mean, it was just totally different. So, uh, so many people helping so quickly. Still ahead, Jonathan Husky will join us live to break down the matchup between McAllister and Coweta. And speaking of sports here this afternoon, the Oklahoma City Thunder are in Tulsa tonight for a preseason game against the Denver Nuggets. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock inside the BOK. And if you're headed that way, just a reminder, the Thunder require fans to be vaccinated or show proof of a negative test over the past three days. The team says you can download the Thunder app to put in your health information right now. There's also a form you can fill out online. You can also take your vaccination card or test results, but then expect a longer wait. Well, as COVID cases continue to go down, health leaders are cautiously optimistic we will not see a spike in cases this winter. Oklahoma right now ranks 27th in the country for the number of new daily cases. And even though cases are down, health leaders say they haven't seen a big uptake in vaccinations in the state now for a few weeks. The CDC says 60% of Oklahoma adults are fully vaccinated. An FDA advisory panel votes to approve booster shots for Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. The panel approved a half dose booster for seniors, people with compromised immune systems and people at high risk of exposure to COVID-19. It's recommended six months after being fully vaccinated. A CDC panel will also vote on the Moderna booster shots next week. Some healthcare workers at Ascension St. John say they are looking for new jobs after being denied religious or medical exemptions for the COVID-19 vaccine. Rachel Parker says she has been a nurse now for 30 years and most recently the stroke coordinator there at Ascension St. John, and she says she was forced to quit. She says she requested a medical exemption for the vaccine, which was mandated by Ascension because she has allergic reactions to vaccines before. Her request, she says, was denied. At five, hear from her and other nurses who say they have no other option but to quit. Governor Kevin Sitt is slamming the Biden administration over its vaccine mandate for business owners with a staff larger than 100. The governor says the mandate is unconstitutional and takes freedoms away from Oklahomans. This administration has no respect for individual freedoms. I can't believe we have a president who wants to force Americans to choose between a vaccine and their job. The governor says Oklahoma plans on suing the government as soon as the mandate becomes official. Well, a new warning from medical experts about how much aspirin certain people take each day. In today's Medical Minute, the side effects doctors are warning about in people 60 and older. And coming up, I'll tell you what time strong to severe storms could wake you up during the overnight hours tonight. And spooky season is in full swing. We'll take you inside one of the scariest attractions, the Castle of Muskogee. 
It's our favorite time of day. Don't be scared away. We are glad that you're with us and we'll see you right back here in just three minutes.